Welcome. 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 Please welcome. The Outdoor Project Podcast. Hear real conversations from industry leaders on the latest in the hardscape and landscape industry. Brought to you by Cincinnix Landscape Supply. You're now streaming the Outdoor Project Podcast. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Project Podcast. Today, we're in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, sitting down with Sean from Premier Outdoor Living. What is going on, guys? Welcome, How you man. doing? What's up, man? Sean, anyone out there that doesn't know you, I don't think there's too many people that don't know you, but well, tell uh, us yeah, a little about yourself. So, uh, my name is Sean Collinsgrove. I'm the owner of Premier Outdoor Living, and we specialize in building unique outdoor living spaces, and we've been doing it for about five years and just having fun while we're doing it. That's the biggest thing. You're not... Uh, you haven't been in business too long, but you're doing some some big jobs. This is this is the end of our fourth year in business, um, but it, you know, I the whole thing was having a vision from the beginning of what I wanted to do with the business, and um, when you have a plan like that, it really doesn't take that long to get there, establish yourself, and all that. And that was really kind of my goal from the beginning, and it only took a couple of years to establish ourselves, especially in the local market as somebody that's doing high-end projects and, um, you know, build up a demand for it. Yeah, I remember talking to you last night. You're not doing a ton of jobs. You're you're trying to stick to 10 to 12 jobs yep. and just make those jobs as unique as possible. Definitely, definitely. That was um, – and, and we're, we're trying to do a lot more of the content side of it now too with videos and all that stuff. So we don't want to overextend ourselves and do too many projects, and I think there's a really good market for – stay in small kind of that boutique style business and customers love that I'm on site every day you know they get to know me through all the content we're doing so when they're in the process of vetting different contractors and they see us they feel like they get to know me and then I'm there every day and we're using their project to do all of our content it just gives them that trust factor where like okay this is this isn't some facade online and now my job's just kind of whatever they're rushing through it it's they know that my reputation rides on each job and that's part of the brand is like there's an incentive for me to make sure this looks cool. And a lot of times I care more about what the finished product looks like than they do. And I'm like adding in extra stuff. If there's just not enough, like, you know, cool details on it, I'm just going to throw them in there because, you know, that's going to sell my next couple jobs. And I think that's, what's cool too, is I remember you saying yesterday, you're, you're doing this project, but you're posting on Instagram, social media, yep. throughout the whole process. So that customer could be at work, and they're they're still seeing what's going yep. on at their own house. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something that's super cool. Like, every almost every single client just tells me how much they love, like, following the stories during the day so they can see what's going on. You know, they love the vlog videos to just kind of get, like, a more in-depth look of how we're building it. And that transparency also builds a lot of trust like if we're putting this out there and we're showing exactly how we're building it we must be doing it the right way you know or else we're not gonna you know so that's something that builds a lot of trust and I think that's like one of the most important things is like gaining that trust before they ever know you and then you just have to follow through on it which is really important but uh that's something that's been a game changer for us is just having that like sales process be done through our content through our YouTube videos and, you know, when the clients are looking at all this stuff, they're they're selling themselves on me before we even meet. That's a huge portfolio. I mean, I look at your uh, I look at your Instagram and for me, it sells a job like before. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? Before. I mean, you're selling jobs before you even go into job sites. Exactly. That's that's kind of the goal is really to, like, develop that brand. So, you know, it's not for everybody. You know, some people might like a different style of project, but. You know, when you get us, this is what you get. It's a little bit different, and those clients are going to just want to come to us, and they're not going to want to shop around. It seems like when I look at your Instagram, what really caught my eye was all your drone shots. Yeah. And it's like yep. you were known for your drone shots. How did yep. you come up with that? Man, it's just a lot of people were starting to use drones a couple years ago. I got mine, uh, I guess it was the beginning of last year, so I haven't had it that long, but it just – you know, with these type of outdoor projects, like, it's it's almost a necessary thing. Like, like having a shovel, you got to have a drone now. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, because you can't capture the projects with anything else. You have to have one. And 
I think something I see a lot is like people are doing drone shots, but they're shooting like the whole house and the whole property. <laughs> like you really got to like look at it, frame the shot right. And, you know, I'll take like 50 drone pictures and only post like one of them because like it's just got to, you know, it's got to be the right just one. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's one thing I do see with drone shots a lot is like people aren't showcasing their work. They're showcasing like how big it is on the house or something like that. Like you just want to get high enough so that, you can see your project and it really like puts it in a good light. So well, it defines all the detail definitely, in your project. Definitely. You know, and that's it, what I like looking at it. It kind of goes both ways too. Now it's like a tool in the, in like the build side of it. So like on our last project, we had this river inlay and we just really wanted to, we knew that that drone shot was going to be the money shot at the end of the project. So I had the drone up there while we're laying out the lines to make sure that this thing looks right. And it's kind of like, you're figuring out what content you want to produce from this, and then you're working backwards to figure out how to get there. So um, that's something that's been big for us is, like, really focusing on the content. Like, what are we going to get from this project at the end that we can sell more jobs from and then work backwards uh, from there? It is really cool that you use that drone as a tool because yeah. I, I was looking at that picture this morning, and yep. the way you, you ran the Antico with the border through the step like that, yep. And then how it comes out of the step and lines up perfect. So you take a yeah. pencil. It, I mean, it, it was really perfect the way you did it. Yeah, it's, and that was that was because of the drone. I was, I, we did a vlog about it, about how, you know, we lay out these these inlays. And it was me for, like, maybe an hour just had the drone up there. The guys were moving around. We just laid out the border on it. And we just messed around with, like, what shape was going to be the best because we wanted something that was smooth but didn't look, like, too symmetrical. So we just played around with it and... No, the drone was like such an important tool in that. You do a lot of 3D designs. Was that yep. design, was that in your original design? That was, yeah. So okay. a lot of times we don't necessarily put all the inlays in there because I don't want to, I don't want our clients to like expect something like this is exactly what it's going to look like because it's more of like an artistic process when it comes to those inlays. So a lot of times I won't even have an inlay in the design. I know that we're going to do one. I don't necessarily talk to the client about it. But then when we get there, I'm like, okay, we're this is what we're going to do with the patio. And it's not in the rendering. It's not in the contract, anything like that. And they feel like they're getting something extra special. But it's really something that we planned from the beginning because those are the details that, like, make for the good pictures, that make for the good time lapses, all that kind of stuff. So they're, like, super important to us. I think just customers marketing customers standpoint. probably waiting for that, too. You yeah. know, coming home and can't yep. wait to see what you're going to do. Exactly. And – We've been really lucky to just like have clients that trust us and let us just run with ideas. And I think, you know, half of that comes from you got to have a portfolio that that kind of speaks for itself. And and clients are looking for that type of thing. But uh, also just kind of like getting your messaging right. And and that's part of our brand is really these these intricate inlays and stuff that we do. So it. It's really, that's a really cool part of it. I think that's what sets you apart from a lot of different contractors out there. They're doing hardscapes. I mean, it's hard to find a customer that'll let you do all this stuff. Yep. Because I, for, from personal experience, I remember you want to do something unique and cool, but they they don't know what they're going to get at the end of this at yep. the end of the project and they're like eh, i don't think i want to try that yeah like, let's just let's just stay simple on this yep and that's i get asked that question all the time on instagram like how are you convincing clients to go with these inlays and these crazy designs and how do you get them to pay for it and it's like we don't really give them the option it's not like okay you could have this super basic patio or we can do something really cool with it at this point we're just we want to do something cool on every project and in the beginning you just have to do that stuff for free. You know what I mean? Like you can't go and charge top dollar and be like the highest priced in your market with no portfolio. So I was in the beginning doing jobs, getting killed. Like I didn't look at it that way. Cause like I didn't care. I was just so excited about the projects, but I knew you had to build that portfolio and then the clients will come. So, uh, first two years of my business, I was just like, I'm not going to focus on the money at all. We're going to make sure that we have enough to pay the bills and stuff, but I know I'm not getting rich in these first two years. We're just going to build a brand and then we can start charging. So there was a job that I still use all the time on a lot of uh, on my website and everything. And 
we charged like 38 grand for that. It took us like 10 weeks. Like it was insane. And now when I show pictures of that, I'm like, yeah, this is about a $75,000 project. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, it's not, it doesn't have to be what you charge, but you got to put that work in if you want to, you know, kind of develop a brand where people are going to recognize you and want to pay a premium for it. Yeah, you look back now, you're, you're probably cringing. Oh, I, I could have charged $70,000, but... I couldn't you at think that of, point, though, like, because they... I maxed out their budget. I mean, we were talking 25 from the beginning, and it was just like, I kept coming up with these ideas, and I was like, hey, look, basically, you cover the materials. I just want to do this. I want this picture to to speak and sell our, our next jobs for next year, and that's, like, one of the things I'm the most proud of is, like, having that like ability to to just say, you know what, we're going to do this. I said, I'm not going to worry about the money too much for the first two years because I know nobody's going to come to me. Nobody knows who I am. Like, I'm not going to be able to just come out and say, hey, trust me, I'm, I'm going to come up with some good ideas. There's no portfolio, but I'm going to be the most expensive bid. We, we just had to do it with what clients we had and just go above and beyond to get those good pictures and build the brand. And then you can tell the people next year, you know, you could tell them it costs whatever, even though it costs half of that for the for the person we built it for. How do you advertise yourself? Is it mostly through, through social media? Do you do door hangers? Do you advertise? What which really? Um, it's pretty much one hundred percent through social media at this point. Um, we did some Facebook ads first couple years, which were really successful. One thing that's that's probably give us the most work is just posting in local Facebook groups. I like at the end of each project, like we'll post a finished picture and uh, we'll share it to like 10 different towns around us that are local. And that's probably led to more projects than anything. And it's 100% free. So you got to make sure you're not doing it in a spammy way. Wait till you really have like, you know, some good content to share and don't do it like you're sharing a flyer that's got like coupons on it, you know, <laughs> but um, just do it organically. And that's, that's probably led to more jobs than anything else. You're sharing them all on the, the Hardscape Pros page. Yep, and yep. I see in all those groups, too. Yeah, yeah. so pretty much I, I kind of do the wording a little bit different because, you know, those groups, it's just like, Contractors, hey, yeah. yeah, check out what we're doing here. And um, those groups are great because I see a lot of really cool stuff from there. And, like, you know, I'll see some guys using an idea that I did, and they're like, hey, man, I just did this project. Like, it, you know, I got the idea from this project you did. And it kind of goes both ways, and it's such a cool community of people that just want to elevate the industry and want to do, you know, cooler stuff. And there's kind of like a, a competitive vibe to it, like, oh, he just did something really cool. I want to do something that, that kind of one-ups that. And it's like a friendly competition, and it just it makes everybody better, and I think that's so cool. Yeah, yeah I, think, uh, I think your marketing makes our marketing better. <laughs> you know, and, and, and we do see it too. So we go, on, we go on to job sites. We go to contractors' jobs. We market them. Yep. You know, in return, we market ourselves as well. Yep. But other contractors look at other contractors' work, and they're trying to one-up them right it's, now. Yeah, it's because. amazing. It's great for the industry. It's cool. And it's, you know, as long as it's not done in, like, a competitive, like, negative way, right. it's really, like, there's a couple of guys I talk to, talk to all the time, and, like, we're just, like, it's a playful competition where we're just, like, all right, who's going to do the coolest thing with, like, say, X product this year? And you know, it's all in good fun and, and we're all like super supportive of each other, but it just helps us all push each other and we're all in different markets anyway. So it's not even like we're, we're really competing, but, um, it's just, it's just so cool to have that camaraderie in the industry now with, with Facebook groups and with Instagram being how it is. Um, it's just awesome. It's yeah. like a whole network on Instagram. All Definitely. you guys, Definitely. you're all messaging each other, getting, yep. And everybody's so willing to share information now um, because in a lot of ways, you know, we're not directly competing. And uh, I even find that people in in my area that I meet, they're, they're super open. There's enough work to go around. I mean, exactly. why not help each other then? Yeah. The real battle is like us good established real contractors versus the hacks out there. So yeah. like we should all <laughs> yeah. band together and like talk about how we're charging and how we're educating homeowners about why – we're this expensive versus the guy that's just going to put down an inch of sand and lay pavers right on top of dirt. You know, yeah. it's yeah. cool. Which when guys do it all the time. That's all a part of marketing too. I think the biggest thing that really sticks out with me 
for your marketing on social media is you're the face to your marketing. Yep. So a lot of companies are just showing drone shots or just showing some of their work and which is good too, but you're yeah. the face. How, how do you think that affected, you know, your growth? It's been huge for us. And, and that's, that's not something that's really going to work great for every company. You know, it has to be, since we're trying to stay small, like this boutique style design build company, you know, I intend to be a part of every project. So it's not going to work if you're a bigger company and like this one guy is the face of all the content. And then like a certain homeowner never meets with that person face to face. They have no part in their project. Then that creates kind of a disconnect. Like, okay, I'm following this on social media, but this isn't really my experience. So I think companies really need to figure out, you know, what's going to suit them best. And for some companies, it's not going to be, you know, one person really being the face of it, unless there's somebody that has involvement in every project or, you know, meets with every client, because I think that's, that's super important, developing a reputation and a brand on online, but then following through and feeling like each client gets that experience and doesn't feel like it's some sort of like fake facade that, that doesn't translate. Yeah. So your owner, operator and marketing guru. Marketing designer, designer. <laughs> every sales, <laughs> every person. Yeah. you're in on Book every keeper. part of the. And again, this um, goes back to that trust factor. Definitely, definitely, yeah. and it's the biggest thing. Really, is that we document all of our projects on social media. So it's like, um, I think I mentioned this yesterday. Like, there could be another company in my area or anywhere that you know has five really cool projects on their website, but they're a huge company that does seventy five projects a year. And, you know, 99% of the projects are just basic, boring, regular stuff. Uh, we want to just appeal to people that want something cool, unique, and custom. And we want to, like, kind of give them the feeling that if you hire us, it's going to turn out like this because we're going to document it. You've just seen the last 10 projects we did. You liked them all. Yours is going to be no different, you know. And if for whatever reason I mess up on the design and it just doesn't have enough juice to really, like, really kill it, I'm just going to start doing stuff for free to make sure because that's the brand is the most important thing. So many people are short sighted with, you know, oh, we we didn't hit our profit margins on this one job. So we got to take shortcuts. It's like that's going to come back to bite you. Putting in a little bit extra is never going to come back to bite you. I mean, unless you're doing that on every single job and, you know, you're just not making any money. But um, that's the most important thing for us is really staying true to that brand. Where do you get your inspiration for these designs? All over the place. I mean, I think I just came into it like really being a creative person. I think it just was kind of random that I was doing landscaping, got, you know, an opportunity to do some outdoor design stuff. And then that was kind of an outlet for my creativity. So um, it was more of a challenge to learn the construction side of it. The design stuff came a little bit easier to me. Um, but really, Instagram, Facebook groups like uh one thing that we're really big on is, is using Teco Block and just they come out with new products all the time. And that's that's especially when you get that like playful competitiveness, like who's going to be the first person to do something really cool with this new product and uh, just all that stuff. It kind of it kind of comes together, keeps me motivated and and just makes me want to go out there and build cool stuff and have fun. Did you go to college for like 3D design or or landscape or? No, I, but I did go to college for about six years, almost got my associate's degree. So, <laughs> it was, yeah, uh, I don't know why I'm laughing. I think, I think I'm in the same boat as you. So I think we're all in the same boat. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was, and it's funny, I only need one more class to graduate. I, I stopped taking classes like eight years ago, but the only one I need is public speaking. To, to finish, so uh, this might count right here. I might be able to send this in and just get like, <laughs> oh, dude, uh, that's cake. credit for that. I know. <laughs> but uh, that was, a, you know, that was like an important time for me. I think, you know, people don't know what what they're going to want to do with their life at that point. And I'm glad I went to community college. Like I paid for it all. Um, you know, I was working pretty much the whole time to pay for it. I didn't get any student loans, and uh, you know, I just didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was just kind of like wandering around doing different jobs. And, and I think that time is super important. So like, I just think that's something crazy in our society that like when you're 18, you go to college, you're supposed to know who the heck knows what you want to do, do for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But of uh, the 3d designs, yep. you know, when you first get into them, when a lot of contractors, Hey, I don't want to put in the time, the effort, I'm yep. not going to design a little sidewalk. So I like your boutique yep. style that 
your 10 to 12 jobs, they're all 3D designs. What do you think yeah. your land ratio from, you know, a basic two-dimensional drawing for from a 3D three-dimensional drawing? I mean, it's got to be huge. Oh, it's, I mean, I'm trying to think. We probably only did, like, a couple projects off a of 2D uh, drawing, and those were, like, the very first ones where it was, like, we weren't making any, the people weren't spending, like, anything anyway, so they were, like, Oh, you're gonna do all this stuff you say for fifteen grand? All right, cool. You know, they they knew they were getting a crazy deal anyway. So uh as soon as we started the three D design stuff, it it just took the business to a whole nother level. And being able to go to a client and you're selling like a sixty thousand dollar backyard, you know, you need to like give them the feeling like they can see what this is gonna be, you know. Uh, I think some people do have success doing those two D drawings and you know, maybe they're just really good at sales. I try, my technique is to just not be pushy at all. I present you the information. I want you to feel super comfortable with this. I don't want to feel like I pressured you into this sale because hey, in a couple months, we're going to be back to do this. And if you feel like I pressured you into this, that's not going to have a good relationship. So I just give people the information. They can see what it looks like. They can see our past work. And that that just kind of goes into that trust thing of, uh, you know, they feel like it's going to turn out really cool. Are you charging people for these designs? I am. So now I'm, I'm charging 500 for a 3D design, which uh, in a lot of senses is really low for this industry. But my biggest thing is like, I want to pre-qualify people before I take $500 for a design. So, um, you know, we let them know how much the projects are going to cost. We figure out a budget with them when we go to that first site visit. On the phone, initially, I just say our projects start at 30000 So that if people are willing to spend 30 or more, they're usually somebody that, that could be a good fit for us. So, you know, we walk through the, the property with them if they're cool with that. And, you know, we'll say, all right, you're looking for this, this, and this. You're probably looking at the 50 to 60 range, and then it's $500 for a design, which goes towards the project. But at that point, they already know and like our work. You know, they've met me. Obviously, if they're willing to give me $500 for a design, they have a good feeling about me. And they know pretty much what it's going to cost and what they're going to get. So at then it's just putting it all together in a design. And at that point, it's like, that's the easiest part. You know, yeah. once they see it, they get excited about it. And they look um, so real, some of those renderings. I know, it's, it's crazy. And you can add some music to it. Well, it's yep. not even that, too. So going back to your Instagram, yeah. the befores and afters, you, I mean, you're looking at your, your 3D renderings, yep. and then you look at the after. So, I mean, yep. so, so the customer's looking at that saying, I mean, this is pretty much what it's going to look like. Besides yeah. maybe the furniture, and we talked a little bit about that. You put yep. a lot of the furniture into your drawings. Yeah. Where at the end, maybe it's not there. But yep. I think that's the only, you know, differentiation between yeah. the drawing and the, the end product. And the thing I like, we're using real-time landscape architect, which, like, so, like, professional designers are like, man, that's, like, such a crummy program. It's only 400 bucks. But the biggest thing for me, like, because some of these designs these days are looking so realistic, like, with SketchUp and Lumion and these rendering uh, programs – that it's like you just presented them a picture of this project in like the absolute perfect light. Like this is the perfect picture. Like you're not going to be able to live up to that almost, you know? So like <laughs> I like mine. It gives them a super realistic view of what it's going to look like, but the end product still looks better. And that, <laughs> that's yeah, some, good. With some of these renderings. It's like, man, it's that's too much. You're setting the expectations really high. <laughs> you just, you just sent them like the absolute perfect picture of this thing before it's built. So like you've <laughs> got to get everything perfect. Have you ever ran into the case where someone does buy your, your 3d design and then yep. don't go with you? Yeah. There's, there's been they, plenty of times. And that's something I kind of struggled with initially was like, you know, should I be handing over the design? Should I? And then I was just like, you know what? I don't really care. Like if somebody else, like it's, it's not just building one project like that, that you're going to be able to build a brand if I find out somebody's just following behind each client and they keep building my projects, then I'll have to re relook at that. But like if one other local contractor builds one of a project that I designed, it's like, okay, they might get like a little bit of, you know, marketing they, success it off makes of that you one project. It makes you feel, feel a lot, little better that you charge yeah. and made money on it. A little and bit. And you didn't yeah. get yeah. nothing out of it. Yeah. And we, I mean, the first year that I started doing 3d designs, uh, I got the program like in the early winter and I think we did about 40 designs that winter and I wasn't charging anything and I sold one of those projects. Uh, uh, <laughs> so there's probably a bunch of those built out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that was, that was before I really honed my skills and like they weren't the best designs. 
some of them were pretty cool, but it also like, I'm super thankful for that because those 40 projects, like that got me so much better with the program. And that's like, you know, how many would I've been able to sell at that point for 250 or 500? This, this way it was just, I got a ton of experience I and just, I got so much better at it. It's part of business really. Definitely. I think, I mean, you look at like a manufacturing site, we were at a plant yesterday. They're, they're doing samples of different color pavers. Yeah. So, I mean, they're not making money on that, but you have to go through that process to learn what works and what doesn't. Definitely. definitely. And I, I think you can't look back now and say, wow, I wasted yeah. so much time. <laughs> it wasn't a waste of time. No, it's all, all those things led me to where I am now. So like, uh, especially like my dad, he owned a construction company, um, still sort of does semi-retired, but at the very beginning he was like, you can't keep doing these jobs for so cheap. Like you, you got to charge what you're worth on this. And I'm like, trust me, I got a plan. All right. Nobody's going to pay me say 40 grand for this deck that we're building. I don't have the reputation. I'm just a kid. I just have a pickup truck. I don't even have a trailer at this point. Like nobody's going to pay me for this, but I know that if I build this, and really develop the brand online, um, I'm going to be able to charge 40 for this, and it's going to be worth it. i got to invest. you got to invest something, you know, whether it's time, sacrifice, money. There's going to be sacrifices. you got to be willing to do that if you want to get to the point where you want to be. Yeah, we were, we were just talking about going to college yeah. <laughs> and how much you spend for college. Yeah. I think all that education and all that experience yeah. that you put in for all those jobs, and you yeah. probably still made money. Yeah, exactly. But, like, but it was an education for you. Oh, for sure. And like, even on that, that one uh, project that w- I think we ended up charging, it was like thirty eight at the end. It was probably like twenty thousand in materials, and we were there for ten weeks with with one helper. So like, I was probably making fifteen bucks an hour at that point. But you know, what else? What else <laughs> did I have going <laughs> at that point? You know, it's like <laughs> I couldn't go work anywhere else and make fifteen bucks an hour at that point, probably. So. It wasn't like I was sacrificing that much. I still made enough money to, you know, pay the bills and stuff. But I wasn't charging, you know, when you look at that finished picture, you're like, man, that looks like a $75,000 backyard at least. But you you got to pay your dues. You got to get there. And, man, I learned so much on that project that just helped me, helped me on future projects and helped me sell everything for that next year. I think a lot of successful business owners have done what you've done. Yep. I've become friends with a lot of contractors in the industry and back back you know when they first started they did the same thing yep you know you you want to add a pillar you want to add two pillars yeah i'll do that for free let me just get this you know yeah just to satisfy the customer and get that reputation and maybe get that referral yep you know for another job so if guys put in the work and i think you know it shows where you are right now you're you're creating a name for yourself i mean you have two options you can either be working making money maybe you're not making a ton of money yep but at least you're creating content you're you're marketing yourself you yep. have projects in the books that you could show customers in the future definitely or the other side where you're trying to charge too much and, and you're you working. and you're not working yeah. you're not even making money yep <laughs> so yeah, exactly. you're sitting at home yep so you you and it's it's um something that like i'm really proud of in the beginning was when we didn't have a reputation we didn't have you know high demand at all I was still turning down jobs that just didn't have, like, the vibe that, that we were trying to build. So, like, I was sitting at home trying to, like, sell jobs, and then we'd get something more, like, it could be a profitable, like, 12 by 12 wood deck. And I'm like, you know, this is really tempting because I don't have any work right now. But all that's going to do, I knew that wasn't part of the long-term vision. And if you do projects like that because you're scared to turn away work, it's just going to lead to more jobs like that. Excuse that's your all brand. it's going to do. Yeah. And it's, you know... I say the same thing about working in like an area that's too far away. It's like, this is going to lead to more work out there where you don't want to drive an hour and a half every day. So we turn down those jobs all the time. And um, you got to be willing to say no to those projects that aren't, you know, don't fit your brand. And it's, it's going to do two things. It's going to not lead to more projects like that because their friends are going to come over and be like, oh, I want this cheap $10,000 deck too. Yeah. And then you're going to be stuck in that cycle. And when you say no to those jobs and you don't have any work, it forces you to get creative on how you're going to actually sell the projects you want to do. So I always like to put myself in positions where like, we got to do this or we're going to, it's all going to come apart, you know, and you just got to rise to the occasion. And that's, that's important. And it's hard to do, but it's something you really got to do in the beginning for sure. Speaking of decking. Yep. I think one of the most unique parts of your designs yeah. is the decking. Yep. 
And uh, I know a lot of guys where we're from, Geneva and Rochester locations, they're starting to get into it. Yep. I think being influenced by your social media and stuff, where do you see that <laughs> decking going in the future? I just think I, I've always looked at myself as I want to get better as a designer, you know, not necessarily as a, as an installer, all that kind of stuff. Like that's the main thing that I want to take pride in is like getting better as a designer. And I think to really create a, a killer design, you got to incorporate more elements to it. Like, you know, you could do some, some really cool designs with like 3000 square feet of pavers, but it creates a space that's going to be like cold and not super intimate. And I think by incorporating more materials, like incorporating decking, incorporating, uh, pavers, incorporating landscape, all that stuff. And really having that work together is what's going to create a killer outdoor space. And I think that's what's most important. And a lot of people don't realize that if you can install patios, you can build decks. It's so many of, this, of the same skills apply and transfer over. And in a lot of ways, it's easier to build decks, easier to estimate. Um, you know, you can do it through the winter if you want. I don't like to because it's freezing and that's not my <laughs> style, but you can. There's dudes in Canada doing it all, all winter, which that blows my mind. There's They're probably, crazy. is there more money in decking, would you say, than there definitely, pavers? There definitely is. If you if you can get good at it and, you know, really refine your processes. Yeah, you know, that last project, you had, yeah. like, some lighting integrated into the wall. Yeah. And then you had a TV out there, too, which yep. you don't see too often. Yeah, and that was, uh, I got so many questions about that. People don't know about outdoor TVs. And one thing I've been doing lately is, like, uh, if somebody's a sports fan, on the design, I'll have, like, a, a photo <laughs> yeah. of the Eagles playing or something. So they can really <laughs> imagine themselves sitting out there, like, you know, they get the design on a Saturday. And the next day, they're sitting inside watching the Eagles game. And it's like, man, this would be nice to be sitting out on my new deck watching this. There's something really special about this podcast I want to let you know. <laughs> There's not too many Eagles fans where I come from. Yep. So it's nice to sit down with a nice oh, Eagles yeah. fan. It's yeah. hard hearing this as a Bills fan. <laughs> it's hard hearing anything as a Bills fan. <laughs> yeah. You guys are like, what, 9 and 3 right now? And not, 9 and 4. 9 and 4. We, nine need, and four. we need one win to get like in the, the playoffs. playoffs. Yeah. And, um, hey, you guys might get to the. Uh, Super Bowl, yeah. maybe lose four in a row. Oh. <laughs> That's rough, man. But it is nice when you can when you can make. Uh, you know, I noticed some of your decks you're building like little bars on the decks too, yep. stuff with a structure over them. You yep. know, it's just very creative. Where I think in Rochester, guys are doing things a little bit different. We sell a lot of natural stone, yep. so they're breaking up a lot of their designs with natural stone. So maybe yeah. like a raised boulder patio, yep. or you know, so the. I kind of see what you do and with the decks and all the textures and colors and stuff. Yeah. So Rochester and Geneva, it's a little bit different, yep. but I love the designs and how you bring the decks into the designs. And I can yep. see it probably growing. It's kind of an oxymoron to us because we sell pavers. I'm sure you, know you could it's... get into selling some decorators. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we, you know, we're always interested in getting, you yeah. know, we sell fencing and stuff like yep. that. So we're always interested in getting new in the new, new things. And I think yeah. looking at your designs and I think other contractors looking at your designs. Yep. It's just another element yep. that I think is very interesting for, for new guys getting into business. Yeah, I think I think it's important to look at it that way and, you know, trying to incorporate as many products as possible, different textures, different colors. It really kind of creates that, that depth to the space, which which really looks nice. And lighting lighting's definitely a big thing. I mean, that was something that I kind of, like, shied away from, like, didn't really push too much in the beginning, but you know, people are using these spaces 90% of the time at night, you know, they're entertaining and stuff like that. And, you know, all the cool features that you build into the patio, like you can't see them at night unless you illuminate them. Yeah. So, uh, that's something that we've started to incorporate, like on almost every project. And even if people are like, you know, we don't want to do lighting right now. I'm like, all right, well, here's a really super budget friendly lighting package. You know, they're not going to be the best lights in the world, but they're going to do the job. And, LED technology has been like amazing. So you can get like a $10 Amazon spotlight and I have them at my house. They work great. You know, they might not last as long, but Hey, we're going to, we're going to be able to do some lighting here for really cheap and it's going to make a huge impact, you know, and then you can always replace them down the line with a higher end fixture. I think a lot of our contractors, especially are intimidated by the lighting yeah. because yeah. they think it's so hard. They got to hire an electrician to do yeah. it. <laughs> They don't realize it's all low voltage. It runs yep. off a transformer. And it's the easiest way to add money onto your project. It's, good it's a good upsell. Yep. Yeah, you know? for sure. I think um, that that's something I'm kind of like on the fence, fence on because like I feel like you just you get to a point with a client where like 
you figure out what their top end budget is and it's like, you know, we want to try to fit in all that stuff in that budget. So like, I don't want to give people a design and have them really love it and then say, oh, you wanted lighting? That's going to be an extra eight grand. Oh, you wanted a cool inlay on it? Like that's something I, I pushed from the beginning. Like this price, this includes like, this is going to look like the stuff that you see on our Instagram. You know, it's not like, Oh, you wanted the cool patio package? Well, that's an extra 10 grand. You know? <laughs> I just want people to feel like, because you see these HDTV shows where they run through this contingency money, and it's like, you know, <laughs> that's something that people just hate, you know? They don't want these unexpected costs. So that's why we started doing, we tear everything out. We're not redecking any decks. So it, it just takes away that, um, you know, unknown factor. So we're doing everything from scratch. We might run into something that's unexpected, but like, it's pretty rare and we just roll with it and like, you know, we kind of factor in like there's probably going to be a couple things that take longer or whatever, but the price doesn't change for the client. Cause I think that's the, f the one thing, if you go back at the end and you're like, all right, we got all these extras. That's the biggest thing. Even if you did a killer job, that's going to put a bad taste in that client's mouth. And, you know, I think it's just that transparency and saying, this is the price we agreed on. I said, I was going to build you a killer backyard. That's what we did. Even if at the end I realized, man, I didn't charge enough. That's something you just got to roll with and you got to make sure you don't keep doing that. Cause it's, it's one of those things customers got to love to hear definitely. from you too, because there's some contractors that make their money on upselling. Once they get to the project, yeah, exactly. they'll start low. They'll get to the project. Oh, we got to add this. We got to add exactly. this. Exactly. And like, and a lot of deck contractors do that. Be like, yeah, we'll just redeck this. You know, it's not going to cost that much at all. And oh, they the stringers are out. Oh man, yeah. this is something I didn't. This was unexpected. We couldn't have known this by looking underneath the deck for two seconds. Like, so I I hate to do that. You know, I've we it's had uncomfortable. To have, yeah, we had to have that conversation a couple times, like on those earlier projects. But that was like when I was I was doing so much stuff for free. I was just like, hey, look, we, I want to continue this wall around here. Give me like twenty five hundred extra bucks, and we'll give you a hundred feet of retaining wall. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? Like <laughs> they knew they were getting like a killer deal, but you know we don't want to establish ourselves as like this this co uh, company that has a really great customer experience, and then go back and just like keep upselling the people. We want to, you know, if we come up with an idea, I'll be like, hey, we've got this idea, and a lot of times if it's like still within the scope, like if it's just an inlay idea, I'm doing that included. But if they come up with something like on the last one, they wanted to redo the landscaping on the back of their property. And I was like, all right, you know, we can do something like that for like, I think I charged 3,500 bucks. And um, I was just like, you know, no pressure whatsoever. Like you could get this done by somebody else in the spring if you want. You know, I'm not trying to upsell you. And, you know, and they can feel that, that you're yeah. not like being super pushy and you're not just trying to like squeeze another buck out of them. But there is a fine line because there are, there's a lot of customers out there that are going to try to squeeze you too. So definitely as definitely. a business owner, yep. you have to, you have to watch your back. Yeah. Too. And, it, and that's the nice thing about we do, we have this all encompassing package. So it's like, we're expecting to do everything in this backyard. So there's not a whole lot of that. And maybe I've just become better at vetting our customers and knowing when somebody's not going to be a good fit. Um, and that usually we can tell in the very beginning when like, they're not giving us a whole lot of like, control on the design and they have a ton of input on it it's like you know that's just we don't work good in those type of environments so we know to kind of walk away when we see some of those red flags yeah are you doing a lot of plantings and stuff i mean is that part of your design yep. i mean yeah is that where you're making some some of your money and your revenue generating or is that kind of not a, really um you know we kind of just like that's something that's going to be included like that's always the first thing people say All right, well how much can i save if because almost every client asks that, what, what can I save if I take out the plants? So I just tell them that the plants are really included. They're free. Just think of it that way. Because we have four guys on the crew. At the end of the job, it's going to keep our guys busy. So, like, if you take out the plants, it's not going to take us less time because we don't split up the crew into two different projects. And the plants aren't that expensive. It's like a couple hundred bucks for, like, a simple planning design. And it just makes such a big difference with our pictures that yeah. the deck doesn't look like it's just floating there. You know, it has it looks like it's built into the yard. So I tell people that that's just like an included thing in the price um, it, and you can't take it out. It's great that you do that because part of your social media is, it is the plantings. For you know sure. What I mean? yeah. Without those, yep. I don't think your pictures or your images are going to yeah. be the same. So, yep. and, uh, and that's uh, just another thing that something I realized very early on was you got to get out of that per square foot price thing. 
So you're going to have, if you're just doing a patio, you know, they're going to get five quotes and they're going to be able to figure out, all right, this is 400 square feet. You're charging me X. You're $12 more a square foot. And it's hard if it's just on a patio, like, you know, there's a lot of people that can install it correctly. And, you know, they might just have a different business structure where they can do it cheaper and still make money. Um, so we try to, we don't break anything down. It's like, here's the rendering. This is say 60 grand. If you want to get down to 50, you can't just say, all right, take out that wall. Cause then it, it's not the same design. It's not a f- complete design. So it's like, okay, if you're not comfortable with that, let me know what you are comfortable at. You want to get this down to 50? No problem. Let me, but I'm going to have to rework the whole design. Cause you can't just pick and choose, take things out. You know, you can do that with some things, but for the most part, Anytime somebody comes to me and says, hey, can we take this out? I'm like, well, if you take this out, then it's not going to work with this over here. And, you know, we got to rework the entire design. And if you're not comfortable with 60000 just let me know. I have no problem doing a design that's that's 50000 but we got to rework a lot of things. Do you that's, find yourself reworking these these um, a lot of times? Or like, what? a lot of times, like, I'll usually show them, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the budget and, you know, at that initial consultation. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll go – the first meeting after I have the design at that highest price point, show them everything they can get and then say, we can work back from here. And there's certain things you can take out like a grill Island or something or gas fire pit, convert that to, you know, wood burning and stuff like that. And those are easy things to take a little bit off. But, um, you know, I find that when you, when you show them everything that they could get and then say, yeah, we can do this for 15 grand cheaper, but you're not going to have this. You're not going to have this. This is going to be smaller, all this stuff. They're like, all right, well, you know, either they're willing to pay for it now or, you know, we're going to wait a little bit and we'll, we're going to save some more. And we have a lot of clients that do that. You know, we're, we're doing one coming up this year that we gave the person the design two years ago. I think it was like two and a half years ago. And they were like, you know, we just weren't ready at that time. We didn't, we, we weren't comfortable spending that much, but we waited. And, and those are like the best clients because they're super excited. They were willing to wait two and a half years for us to, to for them to save the money and to do this project, and that's, you know, that's that's been something that we've done a lot of, which is really cool. You rolled right into it. What uh, what do you have planned for 2020? You got some big things planned? Yeah, like products. I mean, products? is anything like, uh, for me, like any new product you're looking at that, you know, really well, for the for 2020 is going to be a big thing? <laughs> my goal is to just build cooler projects and, like, see what my goal is, like, on every project that we do, I want to have some element that I'm like, all right, this is the coolest thing we've ever done. You know, something about it is just like something we've never done, push the limit a little bit. And that's super important to me. So that's the goal for 2020 is to just keep making cooler projects, see what else we can do. I also want to, you know, spread some of my little bit of knowledge that I have to other contractors because, um, you know, I want everybody out there to know that like, I just started this a couple years ago. I don't have like, this, you know, I don't have a degree in this. It's just something that you just got to be able to be willing to work hard and go out and do it. And anybody can do it. You know, there's a, a, a couple of things that are good to know, which, you know, I had to figure out just kind of on my own, but that's part of, part of the brand too. It's just empowering other contractors, especially those that are just starting out and letting them know that there's nothing, you know, crazy special about me. I'm just, I had a good vision for how to get here in a short amount of time. And I'll tell you how I did that, you know, got videos on YouTube about that, how I built the business and how we established ourselves as this high-end brand in our market in a really short amount of time. I think you're going to educate a lot of contractors just with your social media. I know going through a lot, a lot of your videos and just how to on lighting and just, you know, everything that you do brings to the table. It's the lack of selfishness, you know, and the, and and the education that you bring to contractors that need it, I think is just huge for this industry. And I think if you can, if you can continue to do that, you're going to grow, you're going to grow your, you know, your, your followers and everything. So that's, that's really my goal. And something I really believe in is like you, you give, give more than you're trying to receive, you know, just give unselfishly and, put your knowledge out there and it's going to help a lot of people. And in some way or another, it's going to come back to you in a, in a big way. So, you know, my, my goal is never to like sell these, uh, you know, programs you got to pay for, or like do uh, mentoring where you got to pay me or anything like that. So you guys can hold me to that. So <laughs> <laughs> my goal is to just put it out there for free and, you know, I mean, you're kind of, you're kind of being a consultant as it is too. I mean, I just looked bit, at you know? the drone one you had and you said, if yep. you don't have this drone and you showed the yeah. whole 
the whole thing on the drone. And to me, that was awesome because yeah. if I could see more contractors going out and doing drone shots, yep. and you know, I think that's a, it's a great influence. That was one of the biggest things that changed my business was getting a drone and all that kind of stuff. And like the type of content that really changed my business the most was the stuff I was doing in the beginning that was the easiest to do that a lot of contractors are just intimidated by. And that's why I want to show people like, hey, get a drone. It's going to change your business. It's super easy to fly. You know, it's a thousand bucks, which for some people, you know, they can't spend right now, but save up for it because it's going to change your business big time. Get a time lapse camera. I'll teach you how to use it, how to set it up, what things to like look out for so your videos are a little bit more engaging. And, um, you know, and those things are super easy to do. They take a couple minutes a day and you got some great content. I know you're doing very well with your social media, but did you understand or know the, the time? I mean, how much time during, let's say, let's say a project <laughs> that takes five days. Yeah. How much time does your social media take? It's the biggest thing now is the YouTube videos. And that's like, you know, <laughs> there's not like a huge immediate return because we didn't necessarily need those YouTube videos to sell local clients. We were getting plenty of leads just through our time lapse videos on Facebook and Instagram. But um, that's something that I see long term as part of our brand is really like spreading the knowledge that I've learned, helping people out. And um, <laughs> the YouTube videos are super time consuming. So if everybody <laughs> could subscribe, that's all you got to do. Subscribe. I'm not charging for anything. Um, we put a lot of good content on there and each video takes us like at least two hours to edit what I'm doing that all myself. <laughs> I feel you yeah. figure a job that maybe would take four days yep. does doing all this for sure. Yeah. Takes add, an extra day. It adds a lot of time Definitely. probably on top of it. Yeah. It, it makes the projects take longer. It cuts into our productivity. It takes me like two hours every night editing. <laughs> so, you gotta figure you're paying guys too. Yep. While and you're doing these. There's videos. been plenty of times where I'm like. I got to go out and, and say, pick something up or I got to just go to, I got something to do and I got to run out, but I really want to talk about this one thing for the video. So I'm <laughs> yeah. like, all right, you guys do this, this, and this. And then, uh, I guess just hang out until I come back. You know, it's I, funny. <laughs> I want to get all this on footage. That's where the planting comes in. Hey, can you guys plant those? Exactly. <laughs> yep. The more like little stuff like that, that we have to keep guys busy. That's kind of the whole thing. We don't want to split up the crew. Um, I want to, excuse me. I just want to, do a job, be there until it's 100% done, and trying to figure out how to keep guys busy for that entire time and stay efficient, that's, like, the biggest thing. So um, the more little things that we can add in like that, like, I realize we can add in planning for, like, if I'm not going to send this guy to another job, he's just going to be standing here. So, like, it's not really costing me anything. You know, eventually it's it's not really, like, hey, we're, we're making more money because we're selling the plants for X. You're just – you're selling the whole project for more. So we just show the people the picture and say, this is like 60, 65 grand, whatever. Um, and it's not like, oh, we're making 30% more on the plants now. It's We just figure out how long it's going to take us, what our what our costs are, and then what we want to make on it, and that's it. So I think people get confused with like, you know, we got to mark this up 30% in this. And like they make it so confusing, especially for small companies, that like they don't realize till the end of the year like, we didn't make any money and I have no clue why, you know, yeah. I think people should start out, like figure out what your costs are, your fixed overhead for the year, divide that up by how long you can work, be conservative with that. Like we do 40 weeks. So anything over that is just kind of bonus for us because we've got our overhead covered, figure out how long the job's going to take, add up your materials, figure out whatever you want to make on it. And then that's your price. Yeah. And then you can do like square footage to just check. Okay. If I'm at like, $90 a square foot for pavers to make what I want to make. There's something wrong with my business. I got to restructure it. <laughs> and then if you do that and you're like, man, I'm still well under the market. Then you can look at that square footage price, you know, based on your area and say, okay, I can make even more money than this. But I think that's like the simplest way to do it. It takes out all of that confusing business stuff for people to just simplify it and say, okay, it's going to take this long. I need to make this much to live on. How does that compare? Is my product that I'm pitching, is it worth that? Can I charge more? Do I have to figure out a way to charge less? So you're basically doing job costs, breaking down every yep. project. You're not saying, oh, this patio is $23 a square foot. Exactly. You're, you're yeah. starting from the bottom up, figuring yep. the cost of everything. Pretty much, yeah. To get and, that price. And, we, you know, we know, like, our, our roundabout, like, you know, I can kind of ballpark it by saying, all right, we're doing, like, 400 square foot patio, we're doing this. And I can ballpark it based off of like a rough square footage price, but 
depending on the shape of the patio, like there's so many different things with there's the ones so many that we elements do that, go that like it. you can't price it out like that because you'll just get killed. And, you know, it just comes down to like make it simpler, especially if you're a small company and like you're an owner operator and you got a couple employees, just figure out what the costs of the materials are, figure out how long it's going to take you, make sure you're making money on it. And then you can go back and say, okay, you know, I'm kind of uh, underpriced for our area. I can make even more money on this. Or it can be a big signal like, okay, I'm way too expensive. There's something wrong with, like, the amount of overhead I have, how long it's taken. we got to be more efficient. And that can help kind of, like, streamline your business and make you, you know, more efficient and just make more money that way. Yeah, I think those de- those details that you put in your in, in your designs. Yeah. I mean, you really got to think about that, especially if you might venture off a design and go to another one. Yep. You know, that might take you an extra four or five hours, you know, and yeah, you got to kind of put that buffer yep, into exactly, the price. Exactly. So um, that's that's something that we kind of calculate into the, into the initial design and the initial price. But, you know, a lot of times it goes over and, you know, you kind of just got to roll with it a little bit. Um, you know, some are going to run a little bit over, some are going to go a little bit faster, but you got to... We break down the job after we're done each one and say, all right, this is our receipts on this job. This is how much we spent. This is how much, how long we thought it was going to take. This is how long it actually took. And we can make adjustments from there and get better on the next project that really the biggest thing is figuring out how long it's going to take. Our materials are never off by that much, and the labor cost is the most expensive thing. So that's that's the most important thing, making sure you figure out how long it's actually going to take. Yeah. I think, um, you know, we're talking about 2020, but what about yeah. like a five-year goal? Do you see yourself still in this industry or do you, do you find yourself more doing more marketing or more, you know what I mean? What's <laughs> design what's, work. Yeah. Yep. What's going to be in it for you? For I, your still five want to seven to, year um, I still want to be out there building stuff. Cause that's, that's how I'm able to kind of get better at design is by being in the field and like kind of getting ideas while we're building something like, Oh, we could use this material in this way. Um, so that's still part of my five year plan is to be out there you know, maybe we cut it down to eight projects a year and it leaves more time for content, you know, hopefully five years, we've got 20 million YouTube subscribers, <laughs> <laughs> the most popular, uh, hardscape YouTube in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. don't know if that's realistic, but you got to set your, you got to set your goals high. And that's something that's really important to me is, you know, I want to, I want to teach other people to, you know, empower them to build their business. And, um, you know, I think the universe has a way of like repaying that back to you if you just put it out there. So, I don't want to do these paid courses or anything like that. I think uh, bigger things will come in return if you just give it away for free. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, just looking at it, I think your marketing that you're, do, you're, you're doing right now <laughs> is probably going to lead into something bigger and better that you might not even know about exactly, right now. Exactly, yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's, that's another reason I love having a small business is like, you know, the bigger the ship, the harder it is to, to turn around. And every year we've made big changes in the business and we're able to because we're small and nimble and can kind of see opportunities that are, are arising in the industry or in our local market. And we can act on them really quick because we're not huge. You know, we can, we can just adapt. And that's super important for us in the winter to look back at the year. That's when we come up with new ideas of how we're going to scale the business or how we're going to, you know, just do different things. And that's something that's really great being small, we're really adaptable, and we're nimble and able to kind of change direction really quick. I don't think more employees is going to be something we, we look into. Uh, you know, it's like very said, important because a lot of guys, a lot of guys just want to grow the yep, size yep. of their company yep, yep. and think they're going to make more money, which yep. I think is totally opposite. A lot of times it is. And that's something, I don't know if you saw YouTube or the Instagram video I just did the other day about that. I did. Um, and that's why I asked that question. Yep. It's, it's something that not a lot of people think about. And one thing I've always prided myself on is like, I never get locked into these preconceived ideas of how something should be done. So I've always been able to think outside the box and kind of look at it from my own perspective. And people just look at it and they're like, okay, I'm owning a hardscape company. This is what you do. You grow until you get to a certain point and then you're the big boss that doesn't have to work and you're making a ton of money. And people don't realize like they're so caught in that cycle of reinvesting back into the business just to grow. And they're not really sure like when that's going to stop what it's going to lead to um, and that their job is going to be totally different at that point, And they might not have the skills for it. I realize I don't have like the organization and system skills to run like say a $5 million business with 10 crews. So I knew from the beginning, I got to build something that's going to cater to my strengths 
And, you know, this isn't it. Scaling a business. And that's why I got rid of the landscape maintenance. I'm like, you got to be really, really organized to make money cutting grass. And I wasn't. And I was like, I got to get out of this fast as possible because I'm just going to make less and less money at this. Yeah, I think, you know, too, looking at your videos, it seems like you're really good friends with your employees, you yeah. know, and instead of being a boss, you're, I, you know, I look at it as you're just kind of more of a leader. Yeah. You're the, you know, the, you're the head of the company, you're the face yep. of the company, but your interactions with your, with your employees is pretty amazing. And I wish more people would look at that yep. and kind of, you know, and kind of grow on that. I think that's super important. Um, and one book that I've read that like, I've probably read five times now is how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. It's like super dated. It's, it was written in like the 20s, but it's just those same interpersonal skills still apply. And, you know, I try to empower my employees and I treat them really well. You know, like it's raining today and we're kind of waiting on this permit. They're at home, but they're still getting paid for today. So they get paid 40 hours a week no matter what. And, you know, we're not working Saturdays and Sundays, killing them in the summer. You know, we want them to have a good work-life balance probably better than mine because I'm editing videos all night. But, um, <laughs> you know, that's something super important. And that's then when huge. you treat them really well like that, you know, they they tend to respect you more. And, you know, when when they start doing stuff that you feel is a little disrespectful for how you've treated them, it's really easy to have that conversation and just say, hey, you know, I've treated you really well and I feel like you're not, you're not living up to, to what I expect from you right now. And as long as you legitimately, you know, you're up front with them and you've treated them really well, a lot of times they'll they'll realize it. They'll be like, you know what? Yeah, I got I got a lot on my mind right now, but uh, you're totally right. And it's it's easy to to kind of keep people in line like that, and you know, just empower them to want to do cool stuff. And we try to have fun at work, and that's that's a huge part of our brand. Is like these projects turn out this good because we want to be here because we're having fun while we're here. That's huge. So um, that's something that that's really important is building like a fun work environment because. I want to enjoy going to work every day. I want my guys to enjoy going to work every day. And like, if you're just this, like, you know, like crazy <laughs> boss that's trying to like squeeze every ounce of productivity, it's really counterintuitive and yeah. you, you don't end up getting any more out of people. You just have more turnover and then you got to train new guys and that's horrible. And you know, it's, it's really like a relationship with your guys on a crew. Like, that interpersonal relationships really important. So like, you don't, I don't want to be bringing in new people all the time. We've got a great crew. We have fun. That's super important, you know, like treating them right and thinking, you know, if I was an employee of this company, would I be happy working here? You know, I want to give them opportunities to make more money. We're going to put them on salary next year. So they'll be getting paid through the winter when we're not working, which I think is really important, you know, so they can have, you know, income that they can count on and they don't have to worry about like, Oh God, if it rains this week, I'm not gonna have enough money to, to pay my bills. You're getting paid 40 hours a week. And, you know, we try to look at things at like through a bigger lens and, and just factor that money into, into your whole year, you know, figure that into your overhead. And it's like, you know, if one job, it rains, say 10 days, it doesn't really matter. You're kind of making less on that one project maybe, but you factored in rain days to your, your over, over your budget. So like it really, it really doesn't affect you that much. And I think it's just really important to, to treat people well, let them have fun, um, treat them with respect and give them a path to make a career out of it and show them that they're appreciated. Yeah. I think in the educational system, everybody's yep. pushed towards college. We talked a little bit about it. Yep. The labor end of it is, it is tough. I mean, there's yeah. not a lot of people out here that want to do hard labor yep. and they're not taught how to do hard labor. So yeah. to keep employees it's is crazy. really yeah. important. In and this that's, industry. that's another, that's another reason I want to, I want to stay small because that's the biggest struggle I hear from every larger company is keeping employees, keeping good employees. And I just don't want to have that stress in my life, you know? No. So and I'm not good at, at keeping super organized like that. And the more employees you have, the more it comes down to that profit margin at the end of projects. So you've really got to know your numbers inside and out if you want to scale a big company and actually make money doing it. And um, that was something I knew. I just, it wasn't my strong suit. So I knew I had to build something that, that catered better to my skills. You say you're not very organized. Yep. Do you have a way of helping helping that part of your business uh 
Do you so have your I, wife? I, do you have Colin? my wife's actually leaving her job at the end of the month, and she's going to help me a lot with because she's like type A personality. Like her desk at work is like meticulously organized. She's got like sticky notes on stuff. Like you know, she's just <laughs> all over it like that. Where I'm just more like. Hey, I've accepted my brain is really good at some things, but there's some things that it's not good at, and organization is one of them. So, um, you know, it's it's something I struggle with a lot, and uh, I try to incorporate lists. You know, um, writing down if Notes I can if I can get in the habit. Sometimes I fall in and out of this habit, but writing down what I want to do the next day before I go to bed. To do list. That's the biggest thing, but man, it's easy to fall out of that oh, habit. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think we all do that. I mean, you talk yeah. about employees too. Here at Sense and Nicks, we do the same thing, same philosophy. We yeah. have fun. I mean, you see, we're doing the podcast. Yeah. We're kind of, you know, trying to bring a different look to, you know, even just the distributors. Yeah. As a distributor, we try to look like a manufacturer. Yeah. I mean, we really market ourselves really well. Yeah. The employees, we have fun every day. And I think that you're right. It's very important because yeah. for the clients that are spending, you know, 200,000, 300,000, yeah. you know, with us per year, yep. they got to feel comfortable spending money with us too. We got to sure. provide them with a better experience. And, yeah. and I think that's what you do in your, you know, in your industry and it, it follows suit with us yep. too as well. So I think that's a huge key to success is being able to have fun every day at work and yeah. having people enjoy being around you. Yep. It's and nice it's, when you go to a, a location, you don't even know who the boss is yeah. because you just fit in. Yep. You know what I mean? And I think yeah. that's what really makes things work. And I see that on your social media. Yep. You know, I know you're the boss, you're the face of it, but yep. you're having so much fun. I think it's just going to gain, you're just going to gain more growth in the future just by keeping that attitude. Hopefully, that's, that's the goal. And, and one like super small thing that I always do is like whenever I'm talking to anybody about one of my employees, I always just say, yeah, we work together. You know, I never say this guy works for me. Right. I never say that. And it's like just the littlest thing, but you know, that's always been important to me. Like if, if I'm out somewhere with one of my employees and we meet somebody and they're like, Oh, how do you guys know each other? I say, Oh, we work together. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it's not, I'm the boss. He's the employee. It's, it's, we work together because without them, you know, you'd be nowhere. <laughs> and I'm probably yeah, I'd be driving around in my truck doing these errands all the time. <laughs> Nothing would get done. So it, it probably makes you feel a little uncomfortable if they come forward and say, oh, that's my boss. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, <laughs> we work together. <laughs> me, me and Pat hang out uh, quite a bit outside of work. And like, you know, we'll be just out doing whatever. And we'll just be like kind of joking around and not being super serious. And uh, he's always like, oh, that's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Uh, this and that with. Sean, Sean and Pat. Pat. Yeah. Yeah. I seen that on I'm, what do you think? What I'm looking around at all this equipment and everything. I'm like, man, this would be this would be nice to get this set up. And uh, you know, I think that's that's one of the things that has made uh, our YouTube videos kind of gain a little bit of traction is me and Pat just have a really great natural chemistry. And uh, you know, we just want to do this because we think it would be really fun. To <laughs> and we got nothing to do in the winter. It would be Love great. that name. Yeah. That the name's Sean the name's important. So and uh yeah, so we might mess around with that. We we mess around. We make like songs and stuff. We'll uh, we'll jam in his garage and <laughs> we just kind of mess around. And you know, I don't want my whole life to be just about decks and patios and outdoor living. And uh, my employees definitely don't want their whole life to be about that. But um, you know, we we definitely have fun. It's nice that you have some downtime that you can do those extra things. You yeah, know? and that's what this I love about this industry. Yep, is you know sometimes it gets hard with. You know, budgeting and stuff because you got yep. guys sitting around for you know yeah. two months doing nothing you yep. know but it does it gives us time to do this yep um it gives us time to do some educational stuff but for sure um and it kind of takes you away from it a little bit and then yep. it, you hit it back in the head at the end you know mid-march definitely, you definitely. Know? and that's that's something that like i think is going to be really important for us to put the guys on salary so that you know they're sitting at home all winter but they're still getting paid the same amount you know and they can count on that income um, and I think that's a reason that a lot of people get out of the industry is because it's just so, you know, all over the place with, uh, demand for work. And, you know, one week you might work 80 hours, the next you work 10 cause it rained, you know, we just want to provide a stable environment for our employees to grow in. And, uh, you know, that's something that, that we're going to be doing next year, putting the guys on salary. And I think it's easier, like we'll be able to pay for that with that two months off, because if we just worked all throughout the winter, you know, you're so in the, in the trenches that like you can't, it's so hard to step back and see the bigger picture. So like, I think by taking off two months, 
I'm able to make adjustments in our business that make us more profitable than if we just work straight through the year. Because you can build decks in the winter. I don't want to, but <laughs> you can. And I think having those two months off, it just helps me reevaluate everything, analyze the year in more depth, and then make adjustments so that we'll actually be more profitable with that time off and everybody's refreshed. And they come at it and there's like this vigor to come back at it and like really kill it in the next year. And, uh, you know, I really, I really treasure my two months off in the winter. It's important to me. I know it snows so much over by Rochester and Buffalo. And, yeah. you know, so they try to keep themselves busy with plowing, but yeah. I've never plowed before, yeah. but everybody that does plow yeah. just hates it. I mean, I you know. can't go anywhere. It's a love hate yeah. relationship. Yep. Yeah. I and don't know what it is. You know, you want to go on vacation, but you're like, oh, it might snow tomorrow. That means <laughs> I got to, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah. yeah That's, so I get asked that all the time. What are you doing in the winter? You plow snow? And I'm like, no. When it's snowing, I want to be inside my house. Yeah. <laughs> I, I usually don't even go out and shovel my own walkway. I'm like, I'll wait three weeks till it melts. You know, <laughs> I don't need to go out. That's, man, I, I have no desire to be out plowing snow. Some people like it and they make money on the commercial stuff and, you know, it, it's good for their business, but. Man, that's just something where I, I definitely don't have the passion for that. So it's not it's, for everyone. So yep. Getting no. back to some of your designs. Yeah. And we talked about, Chris talked about a little bit about your influences. Yeah. And we kind of all know, and if people don't know, a lot of the designs come out of Europe first. Yeah. Trickle down to Canada. Yeah. And then Canada trickles down to us. I mean, we're kind of close to Canada. So, yeah. And I know you use a lot of tackle block. Yep. Has Tuckle Block influenced you with their catalogs and their products? Have they really influenced you in a lot of your designs? For sure. I think more than anything, just like the new products that they come out with kind of give you like a new thing to integrate and a new way to use something. Um, like they came out with Squadra, I think, last year. and uh, That's our favorite, Chris. I love that. What's your top three? Squadra. I love that. Top three, man, that's a tough one. Uh, I'd say... Definitely Squadra. I love Antica. It's just that one's so like, easy. No it's cuts so ever. easy and uh, it's kind of hit or miss. Some people like kind of hate it or love it, but we've done some of our coolest things. I think we've done with that. And uh, you got like Blue Sixty. You probably use Blue a ton 60, of Blue Sixty. We actually use Eva more than oh, Blue really? Sixty. Eva's beautiful too. I know. We just did that on our last project. I love Blue Sixty though. I wonder if they'll come out with pressure. like an Eva Smooth. That would be nice, you know. That just would be nice. To tell them. I think yeah. you got some I think oh, you got yeah. some pull there, but um, <laughs> it's probably they, like your blue sixty smooth. smooth. Anytime yeah. I, I mean, right? anytime I come up with an idea, like I'll, I'll message them or something. They're like, "Trust me, we're thinking about that." You know, they <laughs> of like, course they are. And they, the amount of products they come up, like they dropped like three new products this year in the Excellent. middle of the year, yeah. and I'm like, dude, you guys have like so many more products. Like, I hope this is sustainable because like. I love your products, but man, nobody else is coming out with this many products. It's awesome. I love it. That's that's the biggest thing for me is having the design options. That's the most important thing for me with a with a manufacturer. And they just keep up keep coming up with ideas that like, all right, I gotta I gotta figure something out we can do with that. I really want a manufacturer to come out with an end unit for a wall. It's been so long where you have to split a block for a yeah. sitting wall. Yep. What's taking these manufacturers so long, you think? I think every most of uh, Teco's wall products that we use, they all have corner. Oh, three like, three sided end units. Yeah, uh, two yeah, sided. Yeah, two sided. Yeah. Um, no, well, are you saying three sided? Three side, like for Some say you're doing do. a sitting wall. Yep. And you need all three sides of that finished. Yeah. Or an end of a sitting wall without a pillar. Yeah. Where you you know Teco yep. has in every layer they have, let's say mini Creta. Yep. They have two block in each layer that you can split yep. if you're doing a sitting wall without a, you know, yep. why, you know, why don't they come up with a, a product that makes it a little bit easier for the contractor? Yeah. Well, we've, we use Brandon a lot for, uh, and they make a three sided. I'm pretty sure Brandon. I forget if it's three, cause any sitting wall or anything we do, we always make it deeper than like, we'll make it like the last one we did was like 28 inches. We use the Raffinado ca uh, cap lengthwise on top. And, um, I just don't, like the look of just doing like a, a 12 inch. inch. Yeah. yeah. It just, just looks a little like kind of chintzy. Yeah. So we've never really had that issue, but we use Brandon a lot and you can buy those corner units separate. So you can figure out exactly how many you need. We use a graphics wall that comes with uh, pieces in the regular palette that you can use for corner pieces. So um, we haven't really come and come across that too much with Teco, which yes. is nice. I've seen that one, uh, 
the wall you were building. You were using Brandon Wall and Roca. Yep. Roca Wall together. Yeah. That, that. How did you come up with that? Did you see that, or is it just something that you were like, let's try this? It's, um, I hadn't seen that, but if you go to the Tech House Showcase this year, you'll oh. see where I got the inspiration for that. We use different products, but um, it was just a really cool combination that we used. And uh, you'll see on my latest project, I, I pulled... I pulled some influence from uh, the showcase project that we did. So you're gonna be in the showcase? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much I'll be cut into it, but uh, we'll see. A lot of the the focus is gonna be on kind of developing your brand and how to market yourself better. And um, you know, there's some there's some interviews that we did with Teco that that I think will be part of the presentation. And that's something I really like about Teco is like they really empower the contractors, and they're gonna promote you on social media so it's like a two-way street you help out contractors and you know they know it's going to come back to them later anyway but they invest a lot into that education portion with the showcase and everything which I think is really cool I like when you talked about before if you came up with the design and they wanted to take something out because they couldn't afford it yep and then you said you had to go back and redesign it because I know as an artist yeah. That would kill you. I just can't oh, take that sure. out. I yep. put a lot of time and effort into it. That plays a big significant element to my design. Yeah, and it's and the whole design has to work together. And you can't just, you know, take something out and, like, it's going to be the same, you know? <laughs> you can't, like, take the sink out of your kitchen and it's going to be the same, you know, know what I mean? And that's something that we try to design like it's a room. So, like, all of our designs, you said, have the furniture in it, and hopefully soon we're, we're hoping to actually sell the the space is fully furnished. That's probably our next step of thing we're going to add in. But, you know, you got to design it around the furniture. I see way too often people just design it just for, hey, this is a cool looking patio. And then they're done. And it's like, all right, homeowner, figure out what you can fit on here because we didn't consider that at all. And, um, you know, a lot of times that leads to just a huge amount of unnecessary square footage. And just like a really poor design, and After it's yeah. yeah, and it's like you know you have this like huge open space where you know somebody might just put a table and a grill, and then like there's this really small like feature where they want to put a fire pit, but nobody can fit around it. So that's really important is really like thinking what furniture setup is gonna be here, and make sure there's enough room for that. Don't overdo the amount of space, and just make it work. So um, you know. If, if you got more room in the budget, add another outdoor room. Don't make this one bigger because that's something that we try to think about. Like, okay, if we make this two feet bigger on each side, is it going to come like accommodate any more furniture or is it just bigger for the sake of being bigger? You know, so if we make something bigger. We want to make a reason for it. Like you can use it in some way. We sell a lot of furniture out of our locations. Yeah. It's called Dutch Heritage. Yep. It's, it's great furniture, but it gives the guys the advantage because we have the furniture on location. Yep. So they can move this stuff around. Like I say, you know, do yeah. I need a 16 by 16 patio to sit around a, a fire pit yeah. with, with six chairs? Yep. Well, let's go lay it out real quick. You know, let's yeah. put the chairs around it. And the guys are actually kind of what you're doing. We have that a little advantage because we have it in stock. Yep. Now guys are selling patios with the furniture. Yeah. So it's nice. It's, it's, uh, we've had people ask us, hey, can you help us pick out furniture? And we've done that. But we're trying to figure out, like, because there's, there's a couple dealers around us that are like outdoor furniture stores, but they're like very high end. And, um, you know, I don't think a lot of times I don't think that this, like a $3,000 dining set's really worth it. But, um, you know, we want to find a, a distributor or a dealer that's going to have a lot of options design wise and, and something that we could, you know, maybe have a partnership with and have a, uh, a Should talk after this, yeah. <laughs> have like a reseller, uh, you know, account with them or something yeah. like that so um that's something we're definitely looking looking towards yeah i think with your designs you got some really sleek furniture in the yep. designs themselves yep. and i know those furnitures they cost a lot of money it's not, cheap. No, it's not cheap definitely not cheap definitely so. but and it adds a lot to it for sure for sure and that's that's something that like we that's really the next thing to add because we want to sell this all-inclusive space and you know being able to include the furniture it's like Hey, yeah, we're thirty thousand dollars more than than this other guy, but you're getting furniture, you're getting lighting, you're getting fire pit, you're getting all this stuff, like every feature that you could want, you're getting. So that's why it's more expensive. And when it's done, it's actually done. Exactly. It's not like, all right, now go ahead and spend eight grand on furniture to, yeah. to furnish this space. Yeah. So, yeah. 
And having the furniture in the design, it lets people see how they're going to use it. And that's the most important thing. Like having them visualize themselves in the space and say, man, I could see myself sitting on that couch watching that TV. So uh, I think that's really important. A lot of designs I see, uh, especially for guys that are just starting out, they don't put any furniture in it. And it's like, that's going to help you design better because it's going to, you know, make you design more functional spaces. And that's what people, you know, really like latch on to. Like I could see myself sitting at this bar watching TV. Somebody's grilling over there. You know, they can really like walk through the design and picture themselves there enjoying it. And that's, yeah. that's really important to selling a project. That's huge because a lot of customers don't have that vision. So maybe you yep. do just <laughs> put that patio in there. They can't envision where they're going to put yep. the furniture, the grill. Yep. You put it right in front of them and yeah. it sells itself. Or yeah. even what type of furniture, what bar stools goes exactly. good with your design yep. elements and stuff and what yep. furniture goes good with it. It's Definitely. kind of a bummer to see, you know what I mean? You get I done know. with the thing, you get done with the design and now they're like, all right, where's my furniture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to start specifying that in our thing. Like, um, furniture, not furniture included. is not included. So, <laughs> TV um, not included. Yeah. Yeah. And, and hopefully soon we'll be able to include all that stuff, which, which would be really cool. And it would just lead to better content and, uh, you know, just a more complete package where the day that we're done, you can throw a party there. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. invite us. Well, we're, looking <laughs> forward, we're looking forward to the future, man. We follow you on, uh, appreciate on everything. It, yeah. So for any of the listeners out there, where, where can they find you on social media? You can find me uh, on Instagram at Premier Outdoor. We're putting the most work into our YouTube channel right now, and that's just search Premier Outdoor Living LLC. That's like our most time-consuming thing that we're putting the most energy into. Ton of good content on there. Entertaining, I like to think a little bit. For sure. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's that's where I would uh, I'd encourage people to check us out is on YouTube and, uh, and then Instagram at Premier Outdoor. Yeah. Sweet, man. Well, for anyone out there that wants to find them, check them out in the link below. Thank you for coming in today, I man. We really, really appreciate, appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. This was this was a blast. It's been laid back, man. I love. I want to be. I want to be part of the crew. This is. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is our longest video yet, man. We we couldn't yeah, stop talking. Been, like six hours. What has this been? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to get the contractor's version of everything, though, and yeah. I think that's what this is going for. We need so. more of these long form discussions in the industry. Yeah, yeah. I think so. it's. I think it's important to just be open and, you know, there's such like this veil of like perfection with Instagram that like I'm trying to get rid of that kind of feeling to it. So you watch our YouTube videos, it's like, you know, half the time it's like, oh man, I totally forgot that we need to do this and we got, you know, and that's, that's just part of it. You know, none of these jobs, especially when you're doing new stuff, it's never going to go super smooth. So like, I think some people are intimidated by that, but it's like, I'm still learning on every project. Like you just got to get out there and get into it. Don't be afraid. yeah, and have the right attitude, like, you know, recognize that if you're trying something new, it might take longer than you expect, and be willing and ready to do that, but, um, you know, I think too many people think, like, everyone's got it figured out that's doing these big things, and it's like, it's not that way, you just got to jump into it, and there's nothing special about me or my business that that's any different from you, you just got to be willing to put in the work, and, um, Take risks. Well, I think your personality carries forward, too. From your videos yep. to meeting you to sitting down with you at dinner yep. to your podcast, that's what makes it so real. Cool. Yeah, well, I think I think that's that's super important. I mean, not just to to be an authentic person and have you guys think, all right, this guy's, this guy's an all right guy. But on the business side, like, you could set up that facade and that brand online, but if that doesn't translate in real life to your customers – it doesn't mean anything because all that matters is how do they feel at the end of this project? Do they feel like they got, you know, what you sold? Um, that's like the most important thing. So being able to like be authentic. So don't try to, you know, my brand isn't like we're this super cool, like, you know, perfect. That's not our style. We're not this like corporate, you know, like super professional thing. We like to have fun and mess around and we're going to build cool stuff. And like, if you want something that's super professional and like wears like uniforms, we know and, some guys. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Hey, don't hire us. Cause we're not like that. We're just going <laughs> to joke around and we're going to, but it's going to be cool. It's yeah. going to be really cool at the It'll end. It'll be a fun process. It's going to be a fun process and a really fun experience. And that's, uh, that's something that's really important to our brand. So awesome. It's been fun sitting down with you, my man. Yeah. 
Hopefully yeah, we'll get you on again, leaders. man. Yeah, five years down the road, we're gonna yeah. rewind and say, "Hey, make sure, <laughs> make sure I'm not charging for those programs." <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want to, I want to give away, give, give as much away as I can, and um, I know I think the universe has a way of bringing that back to you if you just help people out, and uh, you know. So if anybody listens to this has any questions, you can reach out to me directly on on Instagram. I try to get back to everybody, and um, you know, try to help you out the best I can. Premier Outdoor. Premier Outdoor. That's it. 